Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 8.1 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses the steps involved in advancing a guide wire across the target coronary lesion. Wiring is the eighth of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, and it is an essential step. If there is no wire advancement, it is not possible to perform lesion preparation or to deliver stents to the target lesion. Therefore, guide wire insertion is a mandatory step for percutaneous coronary intervention. Guide wire is not only critical for equipment delivery, but can also serve other functions. For example, it can help stabilize the guide catheter and second, perform measurements in the case of the pressure wire. How to do wiring? It is performed in 10 steps and each step will be discussed one by one. Starting the first step, which is about needing a microcatheter. The PCI is performed through a telescoping system that involves a sheath that provides access to a vessel, usually the radial or the femoral artery, and then a guide catheter through which the rest of the equipment is delivered. However, additional layers of telescoping can be used to improve support of both delivering other equipment as well as advancing the guide wire. Those two other layers are number one, a guide extension, and number two, a microcatheter. In a way, this telescoping system is very similar to the Russian Matryoshka doll, where you have multiple smaller dolls inside a bigger one. There are multiple types of microcatheters, which will be discussed in a separate video. They can be briefly classified into the big microcatheters, usually used for undergrade crossing of CTOs, small microcatheters to go through tortuosity, angulated microcatheters for wiring through tortuosity and accessing side branches, dual lumen for parallel wiring, accessing side branches, and plaque modification microcatheters. And usually the small microcatheters are the ones used for standard percutaneous coronary intervention, in addition to angulated and dual lumen in cases of tortuosity or bifurcations. There are multiple such types, and those will be discussed in a separate video. If a microcatheter is not available, an over-the-wire balloon can be used instead. However, the disadvantage is that it is stiffer, and also the marker in those balloons, which are typically 1.0 or 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter balloons, is in the middle. Therefore, it is hard to know where the tip of the over-the-wire balloon is. Having a guide wire go through a microcatheter changes significantly the handling of the guide wire. There is uh, an increase in the stiffness of the guide wire tip. So advancing even a workhorse guide wire through a microcatheter makes the tip stiffer. And that effect is magnified if a stiff, a stiff guide wire such as a Miracle 3 or a Confianza Pro 12 is used. Handling wires through microcatheters requires um, attention to the, to the location of the microcatheter. Sometimes the microcatheter is rotated, as shown here, to be advanced once the wire goes a little further down. Also, the support can be further enhanced by using the so-called power techniques. This is an example of the power microcatheter in which a balloon is inflated next to the microcatheter that provides extra support to the microcatheter, facilitates wiring, as shown in this case with knuckle wiring. And also, the same principle of a balloon can be advanced and inflated next to a guide catheter extension. This is the power guide catheter extension that also improves support for wiring and for equipment delivery. Those will be discussed separately on video 8.5. Moving to step number two, which is selecting a guide wire. And this is a topic that is very broad. But this is a brief and uh, general guide wire classification. There are seven guide wire categories. Number one are the workhorse wires, which are used in the vast majority of cases. There are varieties of those wires. They can be nitinol, they can have a composite core, dual coil, stainless steel, and some of them do and some do not have a hydrophilic coating. Again, those wires will be used in the vast majority of percutaneous coronary interventions. The second key category are the polymer jacketed wires. 
Those can be soft non-taper, such as the Whisper, Pilot 50, Fielder FC, Xeon Black, and those wires are often used in cases of tortuosity. There are also soft tapered polymer jacketed wires, such as the Fielder XT, Fighter Bandit, that are used as the first wire for CTO crossing, and then the stiff polymer jackets, such as the Pilot 200, Gladius, Gladius Mongo, and Raider, which are used mainly in CTO interventions. The third category are stiff tip guide wires that are used for penetrating hard calcified caps. The fourth are support wires that are used for delivery, that provide extra support. The fifth category are atherectomy wires, the rota floppy wire or the rota extra support and the viper, um, either the standard or the flex tip for orbital atherectomy. Sixth, externalization wires, which are used in retrograde CTO PCI. And finally, the pressure wires, which are used for physiologic assessment. A simplified selection, once again, in majority of lesions, it's going to be a workhorse wire. For tortuous lesions, still a workhorse wire is used friend, uh, first. And then if it fails to advance, then other wires, such as a uh, workhorse with hydrophilic coated or uh, soft uh, non-tapered polymer jacketed wires can be used. The SU-03 is a very soft uh, guide wire, 0.3 gram tip, that has a hydrophilic coating. It is the wire of choice for wiring through very tortuous collaterals in CTO intervention. For CTO undergrade, we have polymer jacketed tapered wires, and then typically moving to the Gaia and the Pilot 200. Retrograde, the Sion SU-03. For calcified uh, occlusions, stiff tip wires are used, such as the Confianza Pro 12, Hornet 14, and Stato 20. For facilitating delivery, the support wires and the wiggle are typically used. And finally, the atherectomy wires are used when atherectomy needs to be performed. In general, when selecting a guide wire, in most cases it is best to start with a soft, less aggressive wire that has less likelihood of causing vessel injury, both at the side uh, of the lesion, as well as proximal, as well as distal. Sometimes more than one guide wires may be needed. For example, a wire may be needed first to go through an area of tortuosity, followed by another wire to go through an area that is more straight. And then uh, even if a more aggressive wire is used to cross the lesion, for example, a polymer jacketed wire or a stiff wire, still, before delivering balloons and stents, that wire should be changed for a workhorse guide wire, and all equipment delivery should be performed over a workhorse guide wire. We've selected now the microcatheter or not, we've selected the guide wire, and then the next step is to shape the wire tip. Uh, the uh, the, the tip uh, uh, shape depends on the task that the wire needs to perform. For example, if the goal of the wire is to get into a septal branch, a large bend is done distally. If it is uh, done to cross the septal or a CTO, a very small 1 mm 30 degree bend is used. For most bends, it is best to form them by advancing the guide wire through the introducer and then uh, bending it at the very tip. This provides much more control than uh, essentially rubbing the wire with uh, the side of the introducer, which is uh, creating much larger bands than the first technique. When uh, the needle, the introducer needle is being used, then very small bands can be inserted in the different wires, such as these CTO bands. The next step is to insert the guide wire into the guide catheter. So the wire is pulled back into the introducer needle because if it is protruding, the moment of insertion can lead to damage of the guide wire tip. Then the guide wire is advanced through the Y connector. And then uh, if uh, a microcatheter is used, then the microcatheter can be used for inserting the guide wire into the body. And then the tip of the microcatheter is used instead of the introducer to go through the Y connector. Step number five is to advance the wire to the guide tip. And this is done by pushing the guide wire. It is important to uh, know where the tip of the guide is and not push the wire too far. That can be sometimes tricky when uh, there is um, short uh, guides being used, such as 90 centimeter guides. Sometimes also the wire may go through the side holes if it's a side hole guide that is being used. Some wires do have some markers that can 
demonstrate the length and uh, provide uh, a clue about how far to push the guide wire. However, one wants to avoid pushing the wire outside the guide caster without uh, concomitant visualization. The step number six is to advance the guide wire to the lesion. This can be done either using the operator's fingers or, and ideally, using a torquer device. The torquer device does provide much better support and much better control of the guide wire tip. So for any complex wiring, using the torquer is preferable, with some exceptions, for example, crossing septals in which we want rapid rotation at the same time as advancement. The guide engagement and the support is critical for advancing the guide wire. This is an example of uh, a patient in whom the wire needed to be advanced to the LAD but kept on going into the circumflex by pushing the guide up. Now the guide is pointing towards the LAD and that facilitates wire advancement into the LAD. This is another example of the opposite. Here we want to go into the circumflex, however we have radial access and uh, unstable guide position and guide support. So what was done is a wire was advanced uh, into a ramus branch and that helped anchor the guide catheter. And then after doing that, the guide was pulled up. That means the tip of the guide is now pointing more towards the circumflex. And after doing that, we were able to advance a second guide wire down the circumflex. So good guide engagement with a guide pointing towards the target vessel, LAD or circumflex in the last two examples, is critical to facilitate advancement of the wire to the target lesion. There are some general principles about how to advance a guide wire, and those will be uh, discussed in the detail in video 8.2. Also, it can be difficult to advance a guide wire through areas of tortuosity, and solutions for this problem are discussed in video 8.3. This is an example of where a pressure wire was opened but was deformed during early attempts to advance through a lesion. The potential solution for this is to insert an anchoring wire as we did in the previous case. That wire uh, provides um, more support to the guide caster and then uh, the deformed wire could be advanced essentially tracking the second guide wire across the target lesion, which is obviously an excellent way to provide cost savings by avoiding opening a second uh, guide wire, uh, a second pressure wire. So sometimes if a wire is deformed but is an expensive wire, using a body wire can help to allow delivery of that wire to the target lesion. The, sec the next step, which is number seven, is uh, for the wire to cross the lesion. And that can sometimes be challenging. For example, in patients with highly stenotic or calcified lesions, or if the tip of the wire is deformed, if there's tortuosity in the vessel and poor support. And treatment for that includes changing the wire shape that is best done with a microcatheter so that the ground gained by the wire is not being lost, using a different guide wire. And if a microcatheter is not used, it can be used in this stage. This is an example of a patient with a highly tortuous right coronary artery and a lesion in the mid-RCA that was extremely hard to wire despite using a variety of guide wires, polymer jacketed wires, soft wires, stiff polymer jacketed wires. Unfortunately, none of the wires could cross through the target lesion. And one of the potential risks of trying to go through a very tight lesion is to, to cause acute vessel closure that is usually due to dissection or a pseudo-lesion. If uh, a dissection occurs, then uh, the goal is to get a wire in the true lumen and stent. If a pseudo-lesion happens, which is the result of setting of the vessel, the treatment is with um, withdrawing the wire partially and taking an image with, a stiff, with the soft part of the wire being in the area of apparent lesion. This is an example of a wire going through the LAD. The LAD is fairly tortuous. After an all-star wire, which is a fairly stiff wire, was advanced across that lesion, there is an apparent severe lesion. However, once uh, the wire was uh, pulled back a little bit and the soft part is now through the tortuous segment, it is obvious that this is not a real lesion, but instead it's a pseudo-lesion caused by straightening of this tortuous segment by the guide wire. 
This is another example of a patient with a tortuous lima graft. Advancing a guide wire through the lima caused essentially acute vessel closure. That was because of straightening of the lima from the guide wire. And the way this was proven was by pulling the wire back and keeping the soft part of the wire within the tortuous segment. And once that was done, TM3 flow was restored. After the wire crosses the lesion, step number eight is to advance the guide wire distally. How far? Not too far, but not too close to the lesion either. Anil Palos, one of my colleagues, loves to say that uh, you want to buy real estate while it is cheap. You're going to have a nice uh, distal wire position because you never know if you're going to encounter difficulties advancing equipment through the lesion. Having said that, you don't want the wire to be too far. This is an example of the wire going a little too far because that can also cause complications such as distal perforation. This is an example of the guide wire being in the distal LAD. And the position here is not optimal because the wire is into a very small distal branch. And that is potential recipe for perforations. This is another example, another LAD lesion. The guide wire is a little too far going through the uh, very small distal branches of the LAD. This is an example of atherectomy in which the wire needs to be further down because the distal portion of the atherectomy wire is actually thicker than the proximal portion. And if that part is close to the crown or the bare for rotablator, that can lead it to uh, essentially fracture and separation of the distal segment of the guide wire. So enough distance, at least five, but, but ideally 10 or 20 millimeters at least is preferred when performing a therectomy, either orbital or rotational, from the distal part of the wire to the position of the crown or the bear. The ninth step is uh, to remove a microcatheter in case a microcatheter was used in the first place. And there are different ways to do this, trapping being the preferred in most cases, which will be discussed in video 8.4. And uh, the final step of wiring is to keep an eye on the distal wire position. The reason is that if it goes too far, it causes a perforation. If it comes back, then the position can be lost. Once again, that uh, vessel we showed you before, middle AD lesion, the guide wire successfully crossed, but maybe a little too far down. And part of the challenge is when corning is done to minimize radiation doses, we may not get a good view of the distal guide wire position. A stent was placed with a nice result. The wire still seems to be a little too far. And then after the stent was postulated, now we have this distal wire perforation. So the wire should not go too far and we should always watch the wire tip. So in summary, there are 10 steps for performing wiring. Paying careful attention to each of those steps can help optimize the likelihood of successful wiring as well as maintaining wire position and avoiding complications. Thank you.